Here we go. Step number 10. This is making the top. So first off, it says look at your estimating sheet to see what the dimensions are for the top of your end table. And if you lost your estimating sheet, I can get you a new one. Just to let you know, those dimensions, the top needs to be 3 fourths of an inch thick, 18 and a half inches long, 20 inches wide. So, like I mentioned before, it's very difficult to find the board that size. So we have to glue something together in order to get it to that size. That's what step two says. You need to glue boards together in order to get your boards wide enough for your top. Number three, get a board from the wood storage room and figure out how many boards you'll need to cut from it in order to glue up your top. And again, I told you, be picky at this point. Look through some boards, find something good looking that you like. Okay, that's some good advice for you. Don't settle on something ugly. You're going to regret it later on in life. We're talking about wood here, right? Okay. So, okay, so again, Choose something good looking because that's what you're going to have to live with for the rest of your life with this. I found a board I like over here and I, I found some other ones that maybe had some defects on this side or something on here, big knots. Maybe I don't like that on my board so I'm not going to choose that one. But I found one that's a little bit more clean looking, a little bit nicer. Some people like the look of the knots or the cracks or things like that. If that's your personality, that's what you like, go for it. That's great. But again, just choose something that you would like to use for your top. Okay, number four, it says use a radial arm saw or miter saw to cut several boards 19 and a half inches long. Remember to cut off any cracks first off the end. If your top needs to only be 18 and a half inches long, why are we cutting it 19 and a half? Extra room to trim off, right? You're gluing these together. They may not glue perfectly. So we want to just make a little bit longer so we can cut them off later. Also, when we glue these together, you want to have it a little bit more than 20 inches wide. I'm not using this board, but I'm going to use this other board. This board right here is about six and a quarter inches wide. If this is six and a quarter inches wide, and I need to get 20 inches or more, how many lengths do I have to cut in order to get at least 20 inches or more. Four. Four, right? If we just did three times six and a quarter, that's going to be somewhere around 18 and three quarters. Not enough. So we need to do four lengths. It's going to give us more, maybe closer to 24 or so, but that's fine as long as we have more. I'm going to just trim off a little crack and we're going to cut four lengths, 19 and a half inches long or just longer than the 18 and a half so we have some extra. I'm actually going to do it off the other end of this board. It looks even better over here. Trim off just the top first. And then I need to go 19 and a half. I'm just using the tape measure right on the fence. Another 19 and a half. I take all of my boards and put them edge to edge. You can see that we're about 25 and a half or so, so I'm a little bit more than what I need, which is good. If I just did three boards, that's only 19 or so, so it's not enough. So you got to get enough boards so you get more than what you need. All right, next on our paper. It says, number five, use the jointer to joint both edges of every board. If you look at these boards, when we put them together, as much as I push on these, there's cracks and gaps. We've got to get these edges nice and flat perfectly that they can fit together so it doesn't look like four boards. Our goal, again, is to make it look like one board. So we've got to go to the jointer and joint both edges on that jointer, get them nice and flat. Come on over. Okay, so part number six says place your boards together and figure out how your boards will best look. Remember the order is important when gluing boards together. So I want you to basically play around with different options. You know, what if this board's over here or what if this one's over here? Figure out what looks the best. Remember, looks matter. I know mom and dad said looks don't matter, but they do matter. Okay? In woodworking, it does matter. 
So flip them over and see which faces you like the best. Do you like this face or do you like this face? You know, this one here has got a little knot. Maybe I don't like that. This one's nice and clean. I like that face. I'm going to use that one. I like that face. This one looks pretty good there. This one's pretty good on either side, so maybe I'll choose that one. But again, figure out what looks the best. And just arrange these however you like them as well. Okay. Letter B, it says alternate end grain. And there's a picture showing what I'm talking about there. Alternate the end grain. The end grain is where you can see the rings of the tree. And they're either going to be a U pattern or a rainbow pattern. This one you can see, it's a rainbow pattern. This one here, I've got another rainbow. And over here, I've got another rainbow. Now, if I flipped it like that, it'd be a U. So, and then this one over here, another rainbow. Okay, we want to alternate this. We don't want to go rainbow, 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 or U, 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 U. We want to try to go rainbow, U, rainbow, U. And I'll <laughs> explain the difference in a second here. So I got rainbow, 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 rainbow. That's a problem. I want to make sure that this isn't all the same. So if I just alternate every other one, now I'm rainbow you, rainbow you. However, now I can see my ugliness, and I want to hide the ugliness, so I, I don't like that. I can put those back. Maybe I'll try these boards. Well, those look pretty good on both faces, so I like that. Now I've got you, rainbow, you, rainbow, and that's great. Okay, third thing I want you guys to try to figure out. Letter C, it says grain cathedrals. <clears throat> facing the same direction. What I'm talking about on this is the grain lines. And you can see on the picture probably better. If you're doing oak, you can definitely see these grain lines a lot. But on my grain lines, I can see this grain line's pointing this way. These grain lines are pointing this way. This one's fairly straight. And then this one's pointing up. So I've got some pointing down and some pointing up. I want to make sure they're all pointed the same direction. So if that's going this way, this way, straight, this way, i got to flip that board around. And now all my grain directions go in the same way. If you don't do that, it just is more obvious that you've glued boards together. If they are facing the same way, it looks like one board. And that's our goal, is to get this thing to look like one board. All right. We've taken some time to put this all together. I don't want you guys to forget how you had your board, so we're going to draw a triangle on this. We like, you know, I'm going to maybe try this board over here. No, play around with that a little bit. I think we're okay. We're going to draw a big triangle on this, so we know how this is supposed to put together. If you didn't draw a triangle, you might forget how they go together. But the nice thing about this, is you can mix these boards up however you want, and even a third grader can put these things together. So you try to figure it out again, you're like, how did I have them? Oh, those went like that, that goes like that, okay, I had that like that. And then you can figure it out really quickly when you go to glue it together, so you don't accidentally mix it up. Alright, let's go glue this together. Alright, once we've got them ready to glue up, we've got our triangle drawn. I want you guys to use the glue table here when gluing. It's a lot easier to do it here than somewhere else. If you want to use the bench top area to glue, that's fine, but I do want you to put some paper down. I've got some butcher paper here. You guys can just pull some off, tear it off, put it down on the bench so it doesn't get glue on my bench. Coming here, we've got glue dripped all over this table. That's what it's here for. You don't need paper down here. The nice thing about the glue table is it's got these slots to hold your clamps. So you don't have to worry about everything falling. You can just put your clamps in here and then it'll hold your boards. So we're just going to line our boards up and have them figured out just like our fire puzzle. That one goes there, and that one's going to go there. Okay. When gluing this, you want to get glue on every edge that's going to be glued together. And spread that glue around. Don't just put a strip of glue and clamp it. You've got to spread it around. So I like to tip all these up. And then get some glue on here. And if you remember, once the glue touches your board, we have about five minutes to get those clamps on your board. So you got to work quickly. Use your glue spreaders. I asked once how many glue spreaders people have, and they said 10, and then someone else said 20. What? I don't want to see anyone with no socks on over here, so. No. 
Spread that around so it covers the whole edge. You don't want any dry spot. And work quickly here. If you have a friend that can help you out, they can help out as well. So. Just try not to get it on your clothes. I know this glue. I've got some shirts and pants that got glue on it and five years ago and it still has the same glue spot that doesn't wash out. So be careful not to get it on your clothes. You mean you don't wash your clothes? Oh, you wash it, but the glue doesn't come out. Alright, that one's good. I'm just going to tip that down. However, this edge still needs glue, so I've got to get glue there. Spread that around so it covers the whole edge. You don't want any dry spot on that board. That one's good. Okay, I gotta get that edge still. Once I get the clamps on here, do you remember how long we have to leave the clamps on for? 30 minutes. Yeah, good. 30 minutes at least. And that one should be good. Easiest way I've found when clamping this together is work on one side and work your way over. If you look on our paper here, it says, after we spread the glue over the entire edge of each board, have the bar clamps alternate on top and bottom. So we don't want to have all our clamps just underneath or just on top. We want to alternate these. One on bottom. Next one's going to go on top. And then the next one on bottom, and then if we kept going top bottom, we want to alternate these. Again, this is to help keep the boards flat. If you have them all on top or all on bottom, the boards might curve a little bit. We want to try to keep them all together. When tightening this up, get them lined up the best you can. And just do a little bit of pressure first. You'll see some glue squeeze out. But your boards start to shift on you, and they move. So before you tighten it too much, readjust your boards. You know, get things lined up. If it's risen up at all, push it back down, get them flush, a little bit more pressure, and then we're going to work our way over to the next clamp. A little bit of pressure at first, and if these boards start to move on me, like some of these are lifting up, I can start to pull on this or adjust it if I need to to get that nice and flat before I crank that down a little bit more. And then lastly over here, some of these have moved, so I'm going to adjust those a little bit. When I go to tighten this part up. And sometimes it's easiest if you have someone else crank it down while you're adjusting your boards and getting them nice and tight. Once you've got a little bit of pressure, really crank down on this thing. Get this as tight as you can get it. You want to see glue squeezing out on every joint. Really tight. Two hands. Get that thing nice and tight. Two things I want you to write on your board. What is it? Name, name and? Period. period. Okay, three things. Name, period, and? No, not for that. And what time to take the clamps off? So 30 minutes from now. Right now it's 9.30. So at 10 o'clock, I'm going to take these clamps off. And I want you guys to make sure you write down what time to take it off at. And you're going to write your name on here as well. Nice and big. I told you there's about... Well, there's about three spots here that you could glue. And there's 30 of you here. So once you get yours glued up, you know, wipe that wet glue up as well. Take it out of here, set it against the wall somewhere to dry, and that way someone else can use my glue tape. And then you can get my signature once everything's all glued up and clamped. Okay, thank you guys. Remember, best advice I could give you. Don't settle on something ugly. You're stuck with it for the rest of your life. All right.